Final Cut Pro is an awesome video editing application and there are indeed a lot of pros to Final Cut Pro. If you've worked with other video editing applications or you're just a person who thinks logically, some of the naming schemes within Final Cut Pro just don't make a whole lot of sense. So let's finally cut out any prolonged confusion and talk about libraries, events, and projects within Final Cut Pro. So here's my Final Cut Pro application right after I have finished working on a video. So right here you'll see it says April Library and then I have different events and I have no projects actually within this event. So let's talk about what all of that means starting with libraries because having fun isn't hard when you've got a library card. When it comes to Final Cut Pro, your library is where everything is stored. All of your projects, all of your events, all of your media, everything is in your Final Cut Pro library. And you can choose where you want your library to be stored. It can be internal to your computer or on an external drive. I personally try to be really good about cleaning out projects and media once I'm done working on them and I don't need them anymore, which means I just keep them on my computer's internal drive because that gives the best performance and it seems to be the most reliable. You can, however, put your library on an external drive. It's just really important to make sure that that drive is fast enough to edit from because otherwise it will drive you crazy. And speaking of things that will drive you crazy, one big mistake that I see people make is that they use one Final Cut Pro library for everything forever. And there's no real intuitive reason not to do that when you're just starting out with Final Cut Pro, but it can cause a lot of problems down the line. So just because a library sounds like some big all-encompassing thing, you can create as many libraries as you want. There are some people who create a separate library for every single project that they're working on, and that can be a really smart thing to do, especially if you're working with clients or you're kind of taking on some bigger projects. Now what I do personally just to keep things organized is I create a monthly library. So right here in my Final Cut Pro, you'll see it says April Library but as I'm recording this, it's actually May, so I may need to create a new library. In order to do that, I just go to File, New, and click on Library, and I'm just gonna call this May Library. By default, when you create a library, it creates smart collections and also a default event. Every library needs to have at least one event in it, and that's what these little folders are down here. I don't use smart collections personally, so I just delete that to keep things organized, and I organize my events by video number. So. I should actually delete this 297 because the video I'm working on right now, this one is video 297. So in my May library, I will create a new event called 297. You could give it a title, a date, whatever you wanna name yours. And then I will just delete this other event here. So right now I've made a new library. I've made a new library and I have an event in that library and there's nothing in that event right now. Now every library needs to have at least one event in it, but there is no limit to the number of events that you can have within a library. And then what I do to keep things organized is once I'm done with everything and I know I'm not going to need those projects anymore, I just delete that library at the end of the month. I don't keep my project files. I do archive all of my footage onto a server, just my raw footage, but I don't usually keep any of my project files unless it's for something really special or for a client project or something like that. Otherwise, I just delete it and move on. And so far, that has been fine. Now, as I've been talking about libraries, I've also been mentioning events a lot. And eventually, we're going to have to talk about what that is. So let's do that right now. An event is a collection of all your source material within a library. Some other editing applications call these bins or folders or projects. Final Cut Pro calls them events. For example, this video that I'm filming right now, when I'm done with all the footage, it's all going to go into this event. I'm just going to import all that footage right into this event. Anytime you import any kind of media into Final Cut Pro, it's going to have you choose an event to add it to. In this case, you can add to an existing event, which is what I would wanna do, or you could create a brand new event in a specific library. If you just drag and drop media to a timeline, like you're already working on a project and just drop something from your desktop into that timeline, it will automatically add it to the event for that timeline. So here's an example from a previous video. This event has all of the raw footage. There's camera angles, there's screen recordings, there's B-roll and all kinds of other clips all within this one event. And the event will hold all of the source media for your project. So that includes everything like footage and graphics and music. And speaking of music, thank you to Artlist for sponsoring this video. If you've been here for a while, you might know that Artlist was the first money I invested into my YouTube channel back when I started it in 2017. And since then, Artlist's catalog of royalty-free music has only continued to grow and get better. There are some genuinely great songs here, and one of my favorite new features is that a lot of tracks are being updated with 
separate vocal and instrumental versions, which gives you more creative options to choose from. And Artless licensing is still the best that I've seen. The personal plan is great for independent content creators since you're able to use Artlist music on your personal channel across all of the most popular platforms. You also have the option with the personal plan to choose a monthly subscription. The unlimited plan takes it even further and allows you to use all of their music on any platform, personally or commercially, in perpetuity. That means forever. This is the plan that I use and it's great for anyone who works with clients, creates commercial work, or has multiple channels on a single platform. There's a link in the description that will get you two extra months for free on your subscription. And thank you again to Artlist for sponsoring this video and for just being so kind and supportive to me and my channel over the years. I really appreciate it. You've helped me to make a lot of great projects. And speaking of projects, let's talk about Final Cut Pro projects. Within Final Cut Pro, projects are the actual timelines where you will edit your work. So going back to my Final Cut Pro, here's a library, the April library. Here's an event for Video 296. Within there, I have all of my footage and my media, but I also have the actual project file itself. And if I open up that project file, now you will see the timeline where I was actually editing the project together and embarrassingly enough, I'm wearing the exact same shirt that I'm wearing today. But just like there's no limit to the number of events you can have within a library, there's no limit to the number of projects you can have within an event. In this case, I only have the one project because it was just one video. But if I wanted to make like another version for social media, I can create a new project. I could call that um, MySpace edition. So I can post it to MySpace. We'll do vertical video because it's what's hip right now. And now I've created another project file in this event. So now I can add this footage to that project or I could even copy and paste stuff from this timeline to the timeline in here. And now I can edit separate projects. This is also great if you're working on revisions because you can have your project file, you can right click on it and then click duplicate project. And now you've duplicated the project. So if I wanna keep this version and not mess with it, but make revisions to it over here, I can do that without upsetting the original project. And all of that is located within this one single event. So as soon as I go into another event, all of that media disappears. I don't need to be searching through all the footage from this video over here when it comes time to go through the footage from this video that I'm recording right now. And that's where events really do help keep things super organized. So it's almost like a nesting doll where the library is the bigger doll, the event is a smaller one, and the projects are smaller ones within that. It's kind of a boring doll because there's only three layers, but. Now, if you're somebody who does edit a lot of videos, you probably know the importance of keeping things organized. And for the most part, it's pretty easy to keep your libraries, your events, and your projects organized within Final Cut Pro, but there are some things that can go wrong. So here are a few strategies I've been using for years now to help keep things running smoothly. Final Cut Pro libraries are kind of like goldfish <laughs> because they'll grow to take up whatever amount of space you give them. This computer has a two terabyte hard drive. And even if I'm working on a relatively short video, it could easily expand to take up 1200 gigabytes or something if, if I let it. So right here, you'll see this one project currently is taking up 150 gigabytes of space on the hard drive. If you notice your Final Cut Pro library is starting to get large and in charge, all you need to do is take charge, click on the library, select file, and then go to delete generated library files. This is not going to delete any of your actual footage files. This is just going to delete the rendered out versions that Final Cut Pro has created and now stored within your library on your computer. So I select everything, delete the render files, delete all of them, delete optimized media, delete proxy media, click okay. And now sometimes you need to reopen the application. So this library is 150 gigabytes. If I close out Final Cut Pro, and then reopen it. You should see that your library size shrinks significantly, sometimes only ending up at like a few kilobytes. Now you can still go back into all your project files after you've done that. It just means that if you make any changes, Final Cut will need to re-render all the footage before you export it. But again, because footage can get messy and things can get disorganized, at the end of every month when I know that I'm done with everything, I just go into my movies folder, find the library I'm finished with, and then I just delete it, send it to the trash with the rest of the garbage. And now when I reopen Final Cut Pro, the April library is gone and it's only the May library with one event. You do need to have at least one library within Final Cut. By default, that will be called the untitled library, but it's of course a very good idea to give that a title. And for my workflow, since now I'm using this May library, the video I'm working on right now will be 297. When I'm done with that or I'm ready to work on the next video, I will create a new event. I will call that 298 because it's going to be video 298. When I'm working on 298, at that point, I can probably go back and delete 
297 just to keep the library a little bit smaller and to keep things more organized. Or sometimes I'll just leave them there for the whole month. Whatever works for you is totally okay. Just be sure you know where everything is going, you know why it's there, and that you're the one in charge of how much space it's taking up and where things are located. So by making sure that you understand libraries, events, and projects within Final Cut Pro and keeping an eye on how you manage and organize them, you can stay a cut above the other Final Cut Pros. And speaking of things that are a cut above, thank you to everyone who helps support my channel through Patreon and YouTube channel memberships. And if you do want to make more progress in Final Cut Pro, check out these videos right here.